is doing job right now in Ireland. And uh, right now for this session, I'm the moderator of this session and uh, I will be helping you all uh, regarding this session. Uh, I'm basically here a faculty member in Zabis Islamabad. Uh, and uh, the topic for this session, uh, uh, Dr. Mokwashir Saab is going to present that is the introduction to scientific research and teaching process. So uh, this is the short introduction about it. And if we say a little bit about the uh, engineer talk, so engineer talks is basically a platform which gives uh, students a uh, career path planning process like how to uh, uh, connect yourself with academia and industry. So hopefully this session will uh, uh, give you an inside overview about the publication process, how to uh, like do the publication things. So I, I will. Uh, I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Mubashir Saab to start his session. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, for this talk. So the topic of my uh, talk is introduction to scientific research and publication process. So before uh, going to start, we need to understand that in science, we talk about creation of knowledge. And when we talk about creation of knowledge, that knowledge need to be transmitted and disseminated to the next generation or to the to the public. Now there are two modes of uh, that transmission of knowledge. One is, uh, you know, uh, heard by heard, person to person, verbally, and the other way is to transfer that knowledge uh, through publications, through uh, through books, through research articles. So in the scientific world, uh, we we disseminate this knowledge, we share this knowledge through uh, through scientific articles, research articles, broadly speaking. So uh, in this talk, I will be focusing on uh, more specifically how we can uh, share that knowledge, uh, specifically uh, through scientific research articles uh, and in particular uh, uh, journal articles. And I will also shed some light about the uh, publication process, how one can uh, publish uh, uh, their research. So uh, if we look at uh, COVID-19 research, uh, the whole world is basically affecting by COVID-19 and the countries have been shut down, uh, businesses have been stopped and you know millions of people uh, have been died and there are even billions of people who are affecting by this uh, COVID coronavirus. So researchers around the globe, uh, they, they were uh, you know uh, investigating, they were conducting uh, research and they were performing experiments and trying to come up with uh, you know a cure and uh, fortunately uh, they they found uh, the vaccines so these vaccines basically uh, some of the renowned vaccines are uh, you know uh, Pfizer BioNTech uh, COVID-19 vaccine and the other one is Oxford AstraZeneca uh, so there are other others as well so if we if we want to understand how these vaccines uh, work and how we can make sure that uh, these vaccines can be utilized by the general public and these are safe to use. Me, I'm talking about the scientific aspect, uh, means if someone wants to understand how these uh, vaccines work and uh, where they conducted their, their experiments. So they need to look at uh, you know scientific uh, journals uh, and among them uh, this Pfizer-BioNTech uh, results were published in Nature Journal. So Nature is, is a journal, very prestigious journal, and I'm also sharing the link of uh, that article over here. The impact factor of uh, Nature is 49.96 according to JCR 2020. JCR is uh, basically a journal citation report. I will explain you later on. And this journal, Nature Journal, is indexed by Clarivat Web of Science. Similarly, if you look at Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine and you want to understand uh, uh, about the technical details, you will uh, read its article published in the Lancet Journal. And it's again very prestigious, very top ranked journal. And this journal has an impact factor of 79.321. And uh, it was uh, it is again indexed by Clarivat Web of Science. So, you know, there are some scientific terms that we are encountering for example, journal, impact factor, JCR, 
uh, clary wet web of science index so the, these are the terms very basic terms that researchers and scientists uh, use so i will explain them uh, later on so this is the screenshot of the nature journal article uh, about the pfizer biontech vaccine as you can see uh, ogar sahin is also there there are a lot of authors uh, in this article uh, researchers scientists and it's a uh, uh, in this article you can understand and read how they they came up with this uh, uh, pfizer biontech vaccine and where they conducted experiments what what were their sample size and how they conclude that uh, this vaccine is effective in curing the coronavirus similarly and this is the screenshot of the lancet journal uh, and uh, showing the astrazeneca results and you can see uh, it is published in the lancet journal so the link has been mentioned there in my slide and you can uh, explore and read this article if you are working in this area so the bottom line is uh, publishing in these uh, journals like uh, the nature or the lancet means that uh, you are conducting top quality research and your research has some technical worth and your research has an impact that's why uh, you were able to publish in these top quality scientific journals so now now the question is how one can determine what are the top quality scientific journals and how in our field we can identify uh, what are uh, total uh, how many total journals are there and what categories of these journals are and uh, among them which are the best one and how how one can uh, publish there and what is the publication process of uh, these journals so i will be uh, discussing all these aspects uh, today now let's look at another example so uh, you know this scientific research is not just related with the researchers and scientists governments are involved in scientific research and they and they invest hugely on higher education and on scientific research and for that they 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 allocate a huge amount of budget uh, annually and they make strategies they make plan uh, and they uh, they try to focus on a particular aspect uh, of a research area uh, to drive that research area uh, depending upon their priorities so here in uh, ireland we have uh, one organization uh, which is known as science foundation ireland it is uh, it is basically a government body and it looks after all the higher education uh, research in ireland and each year uh, definitely they publish their annual report describing uh, where is uh, where the research is going on here in ireland and based upon that report and based upon their recommendation they uh, the government allocate the fund uh, funds and then they uh, they uh, they, sh they share that funding to different universities research bodies and scientists so they have a, a huge budget so now you you can see uh, in their annual report they are uh, providing some uh, matrices and these matrices are basically internationally accepted matrices based upon which the governments invest on research so here you can see ireland is uh, number 12th in global scientific ranking and it has uh, 27th highly cited researchers back in uh, 2019 similarly they they are providing ranking uh, in different scientific domains for example ireland ranked number 1 in immunology ranked number 2 in agriculture sciences uh, and similarly they they mentioned that how many research publications were totally published uh, by the irish uh, researchers and scientists around the globe in that particular year so the question is from where they collected this data data uh, so so basically uh, they collected this data from clarivet okay so clarivet is the body which provides that data uh, to the uh, to the governments to the to the organizations uh, to universities to researchers and scientists and based upon that data uh, different actions can be performed now uh, if you look at another aspect they are also providing some more fine grain details uh, not only about uh, their own performance in research in different scientific domains but also they are providing comparison with other uh, countries within the within the europe and around the globe and as you can see 
they they look at uh, the number of scientific publications they look at their ranking they compare their performance in science with respect to other countries and then they they, they make their uh, you know policies to invest on uh, scientific research so uh, considering these two examples uh, some fundamental questions come in our mind uh, like uh, what are uh, uh, who manages and regulates all this scientific research around the globe means uh, we came to the conclusion that when we transfer uh, knowledge we publish in uh, research articles we publish in uh, you know books we publish uh, uh, you know we write patterns uh, we we uh, we present conference papers so so in uh, specifically speaking who manages all these uh, scientific research around the globe and how these scientific inventions, experiments, studies uh, are conducted, verified and published. What are the major branches of science and what, what is the journal article research paper? What is an impact factor? Who issues it and how, how we calculate it? And what is the role of Clarivet Web of Science? How we can identify top ranked journals? How we can identify top quality researchers, scientists? And, um, you know, the main question is how to conduct that research that really uh, impact uh, the society, uh, the, the, the humanity, and how we can uh, conduct state-of-the-art research which, uh, which will have an impact not only in solving the problems of the industry, but also the problems uh, that, we, uh, that our society faces, the challenges our uh, society faces. So I, if we try to answer uh, these questions, uh, we will be able to understand how how this whole scientific, uh, you know, uh, how scientists are, uh, uh, how, how scientific research works. So let's talk about the Clarivet, uh, Clarivet Web of Science. So Clarivet is basically uh, a company, a public traded company. It is, uh, it, uh, it is registered uh, in New York Stock Exchange and they, they were the previously the property of uh, Thomson Reuters but now they are independent. So they uh, they have uh, invested hugely uh, and working on the intellectual aspects of scientific research. So their main asset is web of science. So web of science <coughs> is basically uh, is a platform or uh, 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 a software or, or, you, or you can say uh, a platform basically which organizes the world's research information to enable academia, corporations, publishers, and governments to accelerate the pace of research. Means whatever research that's going on, they try to capture it, they save it, and then they they try they provide uh, uh, they use uh, you know different data mining algorithms over those data and provide interface uh, for the uh, academia, for the corporations, for the publishers, for the governments to uh, to uh, you know, to understand that data uh, uh, in a meaningful manner, so that they can use it in their uh, for their own purpose. Uh, similarly, they also own Publons, uh, which is uh, uh, which is used for uh, tracing and verifying peer review and editorial contributions. And they also manages Scholar One. So whenever you talk about submitting your research article to, let's say, a prestigious journal. Uh, th uh, then you need to submit your article and then uh, at the back end there is an editorial office with, uh, which manages your journal article uh, for and conducting the peer review process and uh, you know uh, assignment of uh, editors and dis uh, decision communication and all these things. So all these things are managed at Scholar1. So Scholar1 is one, uh, one of the famous uh, submission portal for scientific documents. Similarly, each year the issues journal citations report JCR. Uh, it basically issues the impact factor. And they also manages the ESI uh, essential science indicator. It uh, reveals emerging science uh, science trend. Uh, and each year they also issue the highly cited researcher list and the name of the citation laureates, which means uh, the name of the researchers who are expected or likely to win a Nobel Prize. Similarly, they also have a lot of involvement in scientific research. Now, more specifically, when we talk about journal citation report, 
so a general citation report or in simple word jcr it is issued each year and it provides you uh, the transparent publisher neutral data and statistics so that you uh, you can make confident decisions in today's evolving scholarly publishing landscape and it helps you to identify world's leading journals in science and social sciences and by by utilizing their data you can understand the key citation impact trends and uh, inform their publication strategy so not only they provide the data but they also monitors and exclude journals that demonstrate predatory behavior so journals which are uh, you know uh, not uh, enforcing the ethical practices uh, they also monitor those journals and they have uh, around more than 20 criteria for uh, for the indexing of journals and they also try to analyze uh, abnormal citation activity if they found that there is an abnormal citation activity then they try to ban those journals and uh, you know uh, they, uh, once the journal is banned uh, from uh, from web of science jcr and the, it, that journal will not have any impact factor and it means uh, the researchers and scientists will no, no longer uh, be interested in that journal because that journal will not be uh, acceptable in the international scientific community now we have citations so what what is a citation so citation is a reference to a published or unpublished source and it is a way to see how much well referenced the published work is it can be used to attract funding it can be used to show the visibility and recognition of work and citation is just a metric and uh, this metric basically uh, and all other matrices they are uh, they, they come under the branch of science uh, which is known as the library and information sciences and we call it uh, bibliometrics so the researchers and scientists who are working in library and information science they try to uh, you know come up with uh, solutions they try to come up with matrices like citations or h index or it i10 index or all matrix or, or other matrices so that they can understand how the science is evolving how the science is creating impact uh, and uh, which research is more flourishing which research is more uh, you know appreciated by the scientific researchers so citation is one such criteria so in simple words if an article research article is getting lot of citations uh, we can uh, safely say that that article is getting lot of attraction from the scientific community for example uh, the article written by uh, you know uh, the researchers on uh, on pfizer coronavirus vaccine which was published in nature journal definitely uh, it will attract lot of citations why because it is published in a very top rank journal so serious researchers they try to read papers uh, from the top rank journals and then when they read it they try to you know discover other areas uh, to uh, to further strength, strengthen their research and de definitely they will cite their article so this article of course will attract lot of citations so cite uh, similarly th there are uh, some uh, issues as well uh, it is not necessary that uh, all the highly cited articles are uh, you know uh, purely capturing uh, the the effect uh, for example in uh, in in, a, in in one particular domain of social sciences uh, we have a lot of articles uh, that were not uh, cited uh, in a in a huge manner so th there are issues as well but this is uh, this is the the work of the uh, scientists and researchers who are working in library and information sciences to come up with some solutions and they are working on that and this citation is basically an internationally accepted metric uh, for the evaluation of uh, a researcher or uh, a journal similarly you have impact factor uh, impact factor or journal impact factor uh, is basically a measure of a measure reflecting the yearly average number of citations to recent articles published in that journal so one can safely say, uh, say that impact factor uh, tells us uh, the the quality uh, of the journal uh, definitely impact factor is for for the journal and uh, journal publishes hundreds of article each year 
So one cannot say that each and every article published in that particular journal is excellent. No, uh, definitely there are articles which are more famous than the others. There are articles uh, which are more technical and, and creating a lot of impact than the others. But in general, uh, when we see that uh, uh, journal impact factor is high, it means uh, the quality of that journal uh, is high and good. That's why it receives a high impact factor. There are other issues as well, but that are uh, academic discussion. Uh, but in general, in principle, the whole scientific world uh, agrees that impact factor is the uh, is the criteria uh, to to rank the journal. And if you see uh, any major journal uh, by any publisher, including uh, Nature, Science, Elsevier, IEEE, uh, Springer, they, they mention uh, the impact factor of their journal and they mention that they are indexed in Clarivet Web of Science. The reason is that they believe that these uh, these matrices are uh, fine to go until and unless we can have uh, some alternative. Similarly, how uh, how one can think about uh, creating uh, or calculating the impact factor of the journal? So just to give you an example uh, of a journal. So here I'm talking about a journal. Uh, this is IEEE Communications Surveys and Tutorial, and I'm talking about the journal impact factor of 2019. So what they did is that they uh, they basically see for the last two years uh, how many articles were published. So there were Two uh, 200, uh, 230 articles published in the last two years, like in 2017 and 2018. And then all those 230 articles in the last two years, that is in 2017 and 2018, it receives how many citations? So it receives 5,451 citations. So the number of citations and the number of published articles, when they uh, take the ratio, they get 23.7. So this is the number uh, which is known as the impact factor. Now, so so there there are two uh, two factors that are influencing the journal's impact factor. The first one is the number of citations it receives, and the second one is the number of articles it publishes. Now, thinking uh, thinking uh, from uh, thinking of, uh, about the journal impact factor from the perspective of publisher. So publishers definitely they they want to increase their journal's impact factor. And when they, when they think about increasing their journal's impact factor, so they uh, some of them try to uh, look at the strategies. How can they improve the journal's impact factor? And in, increasing the journal's impact factor means that the, the quality of your journal, the reputation of your journal in scientific community will also increase, and you will receive a lot of submissions. And you know it's a it's a uh, it's a on it's an honor for the publisher to have uh, uh, to have higher impact factor journals. Now one way is to uh, you know increase the number of uh, accepted articles the uh, the published articles. So if they increase the number of uh, published articles, as you can see, it is indirectly proportional. So it will reduce uh, the uh, the impact factor. So uh, when you look at Top quality journals, they they try to uh, publish. You know, they try to uh, not play with the number of publications. They try to control, and they uh, they they accept their acceptance ratio is very uh, you can you know very selective, and uh, acceptance ratio is around ten percent or twenty percent of all the articles that they receive. Similarly, uh, if they try to uh, manipulate the number of citations, okay. They, for example, uh, one journal ask another journal that please cite our uh, articles in your journal. Then you know the role of Clarivet comes. Clarivet try to identify those journals or those predatory behaviors that try to you know uh, perform such activities. And as soon as they define it, uh, they 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 blacklist the journal. And there are a lot of examples of such cases. Definitely, there are uh, uh, there are uh, a very minor percentage uh, which performs such uh, predatory or unethical behavior but even then they 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 have a control on those uh, factors so we are talking about here about the majority 95% or 99% of the journals scientific research so uh, in simple words uh, journal impact factor is calculated 
by using the number of citations and the number of articles published. And the higher the, num uh, the higher the impact factor, the higher the quality of that journal in that particular domain. Uh, there are other matrices as well, which is which are known as alt matrices, and these are non-traditional matrices, and they are proposed as an alternative uh, to traditional matrices like impact factor or H, in, uh, H index or I10 I index. Now, for example, if someone publish an article, uh, scientific article, then one can see that okay, how many people have tweeted that article and how many blogs gave the ref uh, gave the reference of that article how many facebook pages mentioned that article how many Wik wikipedia pages mentioned that article but you know these are not the uh, uh, i can say that uh, not the scientific matrices you know uh, if you look at the trends on twitter or on facebook or on blogs uh, you can see that how one can manipulate uh, easily so and and above all, these odd odd matrices will be uh, will be used by the general public, uh, general audience, which are not aware of about the scientific landscape and the details of the scientific knowledge. So they they are uh, they, these odd matrices, in my opinion, they are not uh, actually capturing the uh, the impact or the uh, or the reputation or the quality of the uh, of the scientific research that you publish. Now let's move to the ranking of the journals. Uh, so journal citation report, it is issued each year by the Clarivet. And they they mention uh, uh, the ranking of all journals. So first, uh, there, are, there are around uh, 20,000, more than 20,000 journals around the globe in 20, uh, 21 science domains. So, say, so they divide uh, scientific uh, science into 20, uh, 21 major categories. And when we combine all those journals and when we look at uh, in combination uh, the ranking of those journals in all discipline, we can see that the Cancer Journal for Clinicians is, uh, is, is ranked number one and it has an impact factor of 508. Similarly, when we look at uh, Nature Reviews Molecular Cell Biology, it has an impact factor of 94.44. And when we look at the third top ranked journal around the globe, it is uh, England Journal of Medicine. The fourth is Nature Reviews Drug Discovery. The fifth one is Lancet, and so on and so forth. So these these are you know the whole ranking of journals in all disciplines. But uh, it is good to look at the ranking of journals uh, of a particular discipline because you cannot compare uh, the scientific journal uh, pub, uh, which is publishing biological research uh, to the journal of medicine uh, or or uh, physiology or physics so we need to look at uh, discipline wise ranking of the journals and we need to look and compare uh, discipline specific uh, journals so i'm focusing on uh, the computer science journals so in computer science uh, first we need to understand that there are a uh, lot of publishers uh, which publishes in uh, computer science, including IEEE, Elsevier, Springer, Wiley, ACM, Taylor and Francis, IETN, there are many others as well. Now, uh, when we look at these journals and their uh, their whole horizon, so IEEE manages around 200 journals, and uh, these journals are in the domain of electronic, uh, telecom. Uh, and computer science and then the whole domain of electrical and electronic engineering and they they are publishing uh, more than 30 percent of the world's current literature in electrical engineering electronics and computer science so you can see uh, their their contribution similarly uh, when we look at Elsevier, uh, it manages around 2500 journals in different subject areas and they have a handsome amount of journals in in the uh, computer science domain when we talk about wiley it manages around 1400 journals in different uh, scientific domains and they, they again they have also have uh, some uh, some journals in computer science domain acm manages around 50 journals in the domain of computer science now when we when we talk about uh, ieee so why why ieee is uh, predominating uh, uh, or dominate uh, or you know has uh, everyone talks about IEEE in computer science. The reason is that IEEE has 21 of the top 25 journals in telecommunications by journal impact factor 
and IEEE has 27 of the top 30 journals in electrical and electronic engineering uh, by journal impact factor. And uh, uh, if we talk about uh, computer science domain, uh, th there are subdomains as well. Uh, for example, uh, artificial uh, intelligence, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a subdomain of computer science. So the rank number one journal uh, in artificial intelligence is IEEE transactions on pattern analysis and machine intelligence. The rank number three journal is IEEE transactions on evolutionary computation and rank number five journal is IEEE transactions on cybernetics. So all these journals are managed by IEEE. So you can see the top journals in artificial intelligence, uh, they are managed by uh, IEEE. Similarly, if you look at other domains uh, within the computer science, for example, hardware and architecture, you have uh, different transactions and different magazine articles. Uh, when you look at information systems, uh, they have uh, different journals which are in the top rank uh, uh, category. Uh, when, we, when we talk about software engineering, again, in software engineering, they, they have uh, 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 you know, uh, top rank journals and in theory and methods all as well. So that's why uh, uh, people are uh, talking a lot about IEEE in computer science domain and, and their subdomains because they are uh, they are managing and uh, owing uh, the the top rank journals in the in the domain of computer science. Now looking at uh, the ranking of all the journals in all the uh, discipline of computer science. So previously we look at all the journals of all the disciplines. Now we focusing on computer science domain. So first we have the list of all the journals in all the computer science domain. So here you can see the first ranked journal is IEEE Communication Surveys and Tutorial. It has an impact factor of 25.24. Then you have IEEE Transactions on Pattern Analysis and Machine Intelligence. It has an impact factor of 16.38. Then you have Nature Machine Intelligence, which has an impact factor of 15.5. Then you have other journals, but these journals are from different uh, subdomains within the computer science domain. Now we need to further go into the depth and look at uh, discipline specific uh, journals. So let's say uh, we talk about telecommunications. So within the telecommunication domain, uh, if we, uh, there are around 70 to 80 journals uh, around the globe in telecommunication, so in telecommunication, rank number one journal is IEEE Communication Surveys and Tutorial with respect to the impact factor, which has an impact factor of 25.24. Then we have IEEE Wireless Communication Magazine, which has an impact factor of 11.9. Then we have IEEE Network Magazine, which has an impact factor of 10.69. Then we have IEEE Vehicular Technology Magazine, uh, Communication Magazine, Internet of Things Journals. Then we have JSEC, IEEE Journal on Selected Areas in Communication and there are other uh, journals as well. So these are uh, the, the top uh, 20 uh, journals within the telecommunication domain. Now, when we look at artificial intelligence, uh, in artificial intelligence, we have uh, top rank one journalists, uh, IEEE transactions on pattern analysis and machine intelligence. Then we have nature machine intelligence. Then we have information fusion by Elsevier. And you can see th there are plenty of uh, journals uh, by IEEE in the top uh, top 20 ranked journals of uh, artificial intelligence. Now let's look at the top ranked journals in the domain of information systems. So again, in information system, IEEE Communication Service and Tutorial is ranked number one. Then we have Journal of King Saud University, uh, Computer and Information Sciences. Then we have Wireless Communication Magazine and so on and so forth. Now looking at uh, the top ranked journals of software engineering, we can see that uh, the rank number one journal is transactions on services uh, computing. Then we have computer science review. Then we have IEEE transactions on dependable and secure computing. And there are these are the top uh, 20 uh, uh, journals of software engineering. Now within the within the computer science domain, there are some journals uh, which can uh, which publishes uh, interdisciplinary research and the ranking of those journals are here. 
So nature machine intelligence, it is not only in, in a, a specific domain, but it also publishes interdisciplinary research as well. So it is ranked number one in interdisciplinary category and uh, computer science. And you have computer aided civil and infrastructure engineering. You have IEEE transactions on industrial informatics and uh, other journals as well. So this, this, these are just the, uh, the ranking of uh, journals within the uh, computer science domain with respect to impact factor. You can find the complete list of these journals on uh, Clarivat uh, JCR website. Let's move to the scientific publication process uh, or in simple word peer review process. So what is uh, peer review? Peer review is basically the evaluation of a work by one or more people with similar competences as the producers of the work. This is important. The reason is that peer review ensures the quality of published research. Your submitted article will be evaluated by at least two independent reviewers, and those independent reviewers need to be expert in, in, in the area uh, of which you are working. That's why they, uh, they will be checking. So uh, peer review, uh, is the technical evaluation of your work by the peer researchers. And peer review uh, is basically uh, ensures the integrity of science by excluding invalid or low quality research. So uh, the journals which are highly ranked journals, they have a very strong and technical uh, peer review uh, and very transparent peer review. The journals which are predatory or which are of low quality, they compromise on the peer review, on, on, on the quality of the quality of the uh, peer review. For example, if someone try to submit their article, article in IEEE transactions on wireless communication, they will uh, they will get a very, uh, very technical and very in-depth uh, and very strong uh, peer review. And it is very hard to publish in that journal. Similarly, talking about other uh, other top ranked journals when you try to submit your article in those journals you will be uh, you know uh, getting a very technical in depth feedback by the peer reviewers so the higher the uh, higher the quality of the journal uh, the uh, the higher the feedback the the quality of the feedback that you receive will be much more stronger so peer review can be uh, done in different ways it can be single blinded or it can be double blinded. When we talk about single blinded, the name of the reviewers are not shared with the authors, but the reviewers are aware of the author's identity. So when you submit your paper, you will have your name and the reviewers will evaluate your article. Reviewers can see your name, but you as an author, you cannot see the names of the reviewers. Uh, this is done in single blinded review. In double blind review, uh, when you submit your article, you will remove your name or any identification tag in your paper that shows that this article is written by you. And even uh, uh, you, you will not be aware of the reviewer's name. So both the reviewers and the authors, they will not aware of each other's identity. So this is called as double blind review. Uh, there are some journals which are following single blinded review. There are some journals which follow double blind review both have their own advantages and disadvantages now uh, coming to the peer review process how uh, basically uh, things work so first of all uh, let's say you have an idea you uh, you you try to uh, you know formulate your problem you conduct some experiments and you came up with some results and you concluded uh, something okay you 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 invented, uh, invented, sub, uh, invented something or you came up with some conclusion, scientific conclusion, or you, you created some knowledge. Now you want to disseminate that knowledge uh, through, through the scientific journal articles. So first of all, you will write it. Let's say uh, you, you go through all those steps and you have uh, your article ready, so scientific article ready. Now when you will select your journal and after selecting your journal, uh, there, there are a lot of details that I'm skipping, okay? So once you, uh, submit your journals, your journal will go uh, to the editorial office. The editorial office is an office uh, within uh, uh, within the journal, uh, which manages the journal, in fact. 
so they will evaluate your article check the initial uh, aspects in your in your article whether uh, you are following the template whether the page limit is fine or uh, other administrative administrative things so once they are uh, happy with that they also check the similarity uh, the plagiarism if someone has not copied uh, anyone else ideas or uh, material uh, in, in in their article so if they are happy with that okay they they then pass your uh, article to the editor in chief the editor in chief is the person who is uh, you know very technical very strong in that area uh, of of that journal which he is uh, you know uh, managing uh, they they are, they are expert researchers and scientists in their domain so they know uh, they when they look at your article they can they can safely say that uh, the quality of the article is okay or not and based upon their experience uh, they can immediately reject the article if the article is not up to the uh, quality uh, and if if this believe that the article has some quality and it should go for the peer review process then they assign that article to the area editor or associate editor depending upon the journal different journals have different uh, structure organizational structure of editors and editor in chief and associate editors then uh, the the handling editor or area editor or associate editor will assign reviewers to your paper so these reviewers uh, need to be uh, independent reviewers and there should not be any conflict of interest and then those reviewers uh, will be given some time and they they will uh, read your article evaluate it scientifically and try to find any flaws in your article and if they are happy uh, 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 with their review process they will write their review on your article on your scientific contribution and then they submit uh, their their recommendation so then the associate editor receive all the review reports when the associate editor will receive all the reports they will you know read all the review reports in detail and analyze uh, analyze the the comments by the reviewers and the, uh, he or she himself will look at uh, the contribution of the article once again and then uh, the associate editor will uh, will make a decision and communicate that decision uh, uh, to the authors via the editor in chief or directly it depends upon uh, the journal and if uh, the uh, if the article uh, has some substantial flaws and need some major revision uh, the article article will go through uh, in different steps uh, in different steps in terms of revision and once all the reviewers are happy once the editor are happy and then your article will finally be uh, published so it, it this is the very short uh, peer review life cycle from submission to uh, publication of your article there are a lot of uh, technical details there are a lot of aspects in it but if you look at the peer review process uh, you know peer review process is there uh, to uh, to ensure the quality of the scientific research uh, that is being published if someone try to manipulate the peer review process definitely uh, they may get their paper accepted but it is unethical uh, both in in the scientific community and uh, uh, religious religi religiously as well now uh, looking at the peer review process uh, there are different responsibilities there are three major actors in the peer review process authors reviewers and editors so the the responsibility of authors is that they when they when they write their research articles when they communicate their scientific knowledge uh, which they created they adopt ethical practices and they when if when they receive the comments from the reviewers they try to address those comments uh, carefully and they follow uh, you know uh, when when they when they try to address they do, do not try to uh, you know influence the reviewers or editors or using any unfair means to get their article published similarly uh, it has been observed that some authors try to write their re reviewer response file and they say that okay we have addressed all these comments but when we look at the the actual uh, draft uh, those changes are not made so this is again uh, an unethical practice uh, authors uh, those authors who are uh, trying to deceive this they can be identified by the reviewers and editors and it gives a bad impression uh, uh, internally similarly there is some responsibility of reviewers uh, so reviewers uh, it's it's a tot it's totally a volunteer activity so uh, being a professional researcher or scientist 
we should not only uh, conduct some research, but we also should serve the scientific community as well. And this is how science, uh, you know, further flourish. Uh, so we should conduct review of high standard, you know, in, in, in our technical domain and provide, uh, you know, technical uh, feedback to the authors. We should not be harsh or biased. We should look at the scientific quality of the uh, content of the paper, not where the authors belong or not uh, the geographical aspect or any religious aspect. Instead, we should not at all look at the authors. We should look at what is there in the article, uh, the contribution is sufficient or not, and the, and the problem address is uh, correctly formulated and uh, the other technical details. So uh, as a reviewer, a reviewer should provide unbi uh, unbiased reviews. Now there are some responsibilities of editors as well. They take unbiased decision and look at the content of the paper and uh, and you know look uh, and perform their uh, activities in an ethical manner. So this is how uh, the peer review process and uh, the responsibilities of different actors work. Now there are uh, two ways in general, two ways of publishing in scientific journals. And the first one is open access journal. Uh, open access journals uh, basically when you when you uh, go to the journal website, you can easily download any uh, the article PDF without any uh, without paying uh, paying anything. And uh, there there are uh, some 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 reservations uh, as well in the scientific community. For example, uh, open access journal are charging huge amount. For example, ranging from fifteen hundred US dollar to two thousand US dollar. This is a huge amount that one cannot uh, pay. And uh, but there are some advantages as well. For example, uh, you know, if you publish your uh, article to a uh, to a top ranked journal, and that journal may take two years to publish your article, then you know it is very uh, disappointing for for early career researchers or for researchers in general that the article is taking uh, taking too much time. So one of the advantage of open access journal in 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 general is that they try to make ensure that they per, uh, they provide you quick feedback and quick publication. And th there are different opinions about open access journals and even for the subscription based journals. And uh, th 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 it is completely fine to publish in open access journals until you uh, until unless you are happy that uh, your uh, the quality of your work is good and the, the quality of journal is good and you are following the ethical practices. OK, but uh, you know th there were some some investigations uh, in the past years and they 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 look at some predatory journals and they uh, they submit you know a bogus paper uh, in those journals some of those journals and they found that their paper were accepted immediately and and those publishers were uh, considered as predatory publishers because they were they were focusing on making money not on the scientific contribution so so you know we need to be very much careful we need to understand that which journals are good in our scientific domain and then we try to uh, 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 publish in those journals. But in principle, publishing in open access journals is, uh, is fine. They, on the other hand, we have subscription based journals. There are issues uh, with the subscription based journal. For example, you know, not the general public can access to the research articles. You know, it is uh, every article you need to pay. And, uh, you know, the scientists and researchers, when they work, they work on the taxpayers' money. Okay. And when they publish their research, their research should be publicly available. So that, that is one of the argument that that is against the subscription based journals. So a lot of uh, subscription based journals are now moving towards making their uh, uh, journal uh, into hybrid mode, which is that they they, uh, they offer both subscription based and uh, open access uh, options to the authors. Uh, another issue with subscription based journal is that they take a lot of time in the in the peer review process and their peer review process is uh, quite strict and even uh, when they take six months for the first review. Uh, but if you look at uh, you know the distribution of uh, top rank journals, uh, you will find that normally subscription based journals are the uh, top rank uh, journals. So this is uh, this is uh, two way. Uh, these are the two ways. Uh, through which one can publish uh, their articles. Now quickly winding up uh, and sh sharing you some scientific research and related terms. So basically 
when you have an idea, so uh, you you conduct some experiments, uh, you provide some solution, you address some challenge, and then you write your research paper, and then you uh, you disseminate your research paper. You you share your knowledge. Okay. Now there are different types of scientific publications. The first one is patent. Uh, we call it Sanade Hake Ijad in Urdu. Then we have research papers. So research papers basically we call it Tahkiki Makala in Urdu. And there are different types of uh, research papers. Uh, I'm focusing here on uh, journals. So in journals, you can have magazine articles, you can have transactions articles, letters, normal journals, review survey journals. Then you have uh, conferences. Uh, then you have posters, technical reports, you have books, book chapters. Now, uh, going into more detail, you have uh, different types of research papers in journals. You have the technical article, okay? Uh, technical articles can be uh, published in journal articles, transaction articles, letters. Uh, uh, I'm specifically talking about the computer science domain. So the primary purpose of journals, transactions, and letters is to disclose and provide a permanent archival record of original technical work that advances the state of the art or provides novel insights. So technical article, they are the they are the main articles where you you know discover something where you uh, perform some some technical research and they, they are the most prestigious okay then you have uh, review articles or survey articles uh, you cannot compare the review or survey articles with the technical article they, their style is different they are basically visionary articles they try to classify existing literature to help readers to understand the topic one of the major uh, contribution in the review or survey article is is that they identify future research directions so if someone try to start research in any particular area so they they will read those review articles and they will understand what has been done in this area what are the challenges and what uh, what is required in the future so that's why uh, the 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 citations of review articles are quite higher than the technical articles then you have the magazine articles. Magazine articles are totally different from the, uh, you know, technical articles or from the review articles. In magazine articles, you try to target, you know, a particular audience, a general audience. You do not uh, need to go into the uh, lot of technical details, and you also cannot provide a lot of, uh, you know, review on that. So you you will be, you know, in a balanced way, you try to, uh, to to present your idea. Then you have editorials. Editorials basically uh, are written by the guest editors or editors uh, which are working on a particular area and they are basically just an introductory uh, one pager or two pager article where the editor try to uh, describe why this topic is important, what papers uh, are there in this particular special issue. So these are uh, uh, the, the types of research papers which one can find. There is another one which is which I forget to tell you which is letters. So letters are four page articles. Letters are purely technical articles. And if you want, uh, if you have a short idea and you want to disseminate it very quickly, you will focus on uh, uh, letters. But if you have, you know, uh, a, a big idea and it requires a lot of length uh, to justify its contribution, you will go for journal articles or technical articles. Now, uh, these are a few of the scientific publishers, IEEE, Elsevier, Springer, Wiley, Interscience, ACM, Taylor and Francis Group, CRC Press, Hindavi. Now, if, if you look at the patent, the uh, the patent will be look like that. Uh, you can go to the uh, patents.google.com and look at uh, and read about the details. So patents are basically Hake Sanade Jad, and here you uh, you you uh, you describe your invention and uh, Patents are very prestigious in scientific community, and uh, basically you register your patent with uh, with different organization patent granting organizations. And uh, if your invention or this patent will be used by any any company uh, for uh, to uh, to produce that product, uh, they will be uh, paying you. They will get permission from you, and then they can use your invention. Now here I am giving you a few examples of the journal articles. So this one is basically an example of a technical article that is published in uh, Computer Communications Journal. So it it, uh, it is purely a technical article. 
Then here is an example of an article published in IEEE Transactions. Again, this is a purely a technical article that uh, uh, one is conducting research on. Then another example of a technical article published in IEEE Transaction. Then here, this is an example of a survey or review article published in, uh, in a journal. This is uh, an example of visionary article published in a transaction. OK, this is some sort of visionary article. Then this is an example of uh, uh, an editorial published in, uh, in a magazine. Then this is uh, another example of an article which is published in a magazine. This is an example of uh, editorial published in transactions. So these are a few examples of different types of scientific articles. Now, just to uh, give you a short uh, suggestion about uh, starting your research based career. So for a research based career, uh, PhD is mandatory. Of course, uh, one can uh, do research without getting the PhD degree, but it's you know it's good to have the PhD degree. Why you go for PhD degree? Because you want to work in industry research and development. You want to pursue your career in academia and you want to you know become a professor. You want to attract funding. You want to recognize yourself in scientific community. You want to disseminate knowledge. You want to supervise PhDs and MC students and you want to invent something or to research or discover. You know th there are many advantages of doing PhD. So in PhD, you will understand and learn how to conduct research in a systematic way. You will be assigned a supervisor and the supervisor in three years to five years will guide you uh, through all the processes of research. So when we talk about PhD, uh, it is always better to uh, get funding uh, scholarship for PhD. So there are uh, typically speaking, uh, I'm talking about here in Ireland in Ireland. Uh, PhD duration is around four years and for a scholarship they give around uh, 1 lakh 20 thousand euros for four years. So it is more than you know 2 crore, rupee, two crore rupees in Pakistani rupees. It's a huge amount they will give you for four years. And uh, if we if we divide uh, this amount, this amount, uh, you know 2 crore rupee, uh, so annually they will giving they will be giving you 18,500 euros uh, scholarship uh, uh, as a scholarship. OK, so it will be around uh, 1500 euros per month, which is around um, around, you know. Do lakh asi hazar se teen lakh chalis hazar rupees, something like that per month. This is a huge amount, you know, when you when you complete your undergraduate, let's say you did your uh, BS or you did your engineering degree. And if you go into the market, you will get 30,000 rupees and monthly or 40,000, 50,000, 60,000. But if you try to go and uh, get admission in PhD, you will get a uh, handsome amount in terms of scholarship. And the added advantage is that uh, you will also be doing some research and you will be uh, increasing your qualification. But remember, the intention to earn money through PhD is, is not a good intention. Uh, if you are really want to do research and adopt that career, then uh, go for uh, that direction. Otherwise, uh, I can uh, I can tell you that uh, PhD is very difficult and uh, it's it's a it's a very difficult uh, procedure if you even do PhD from anywhere in the world. So don't go for the money. Uh, this uh, I'm just telling you the amount of this money uh, as part of scholarship because uh, it, it's a main hurdle uh, for uh, students uh, when they think about getting admission in uh, you know foreign universities. So if you if you get admission in a foreign university, you will get that much huge amount of uh, scholarship and this scholarship will not only cover your you know stipend monthly stipend which you can use for your you know monthly expenses of living and uh, uh, accommodation, but they will also uh, cover your annual fees, your travel cost. For example, if you want to present your article in a conference in US or in Australia, uh, your whole travel journey and living expenses for four or five days or for the duration of the conference will be covered uh, in that funding. There is a equipment cost if you need some specific uh, what you can say equipment uh, to conduct your experiments 
or you need laptop or computer or any other software. Uh, all these things uh, will also be covered. And if you require any specific training in terms of software or in terms of uh, learning any mathematical uh, modeling technique or courses, it, they all, all those will be covered. So th there are many other details that I skipped. So uh, I think the time is over. So I now stop my uh, presentation over here. And if you have any questions, you are most welcome. Uh, uh, thank you all so much for, for giving us the insight information about the uh, publication process and how to publish an article. Uh, there are some few questions even from my side as well. Uh, because uh, I'm about to complete my PhD over here in Pakistan. And uh, there are uh, some things that are like uh, most of the time, like uh, researchers do self citation. Like if I publish my own research article and uh, if I'm going to publish another article, so I do self citation of the previous article. So is it a good thing or a bad thing? Self citation uh, is a bad thing. The reason is that uh, uh, you can increase the number of citations, but uh, it is not a good thing. First, first of all, you need to understand that uh, when you look at Clarivet, Clarivet automatically uh, minus the, the self citations. OK, so if you look at the profile of any researcher in Google Scholar, uh, by the way, Google Scholar uh, is not 100 percent reliable in terms of showing the profile of a researcher. So never go and look at the profile of a researchers on Google uh, Scholar. Uh, it, it gives you some idea. OK, but try to look at the profile of that researcher on Web of Science, OK, because Web of Science, they only consider journals indexed by Web of Science, OK. They remove the self citations. So when you look at the profile of a researcher on Google Scholar, OK, uh, for example, it receives X number of citations, OK. And when you look at the same profile of that researcher on Clarivet, you will find that the number of citations is three times X by three less because of the uh, self citation and other issues as well. Similarly, uh, uh, asking others to include your article as site uh, um, and cite, it is not a good pra practice. Y you know, when you write your article and let's say if you are working in a particular domain of, uh, let's say, uh, GANs, uh, generative uh, adversarial networking or in a particular topic on machine learning, and you have been working in that area for last 10 years, Definitely your research will be building on your own research. And if you cite self cite your articles, one or two articles previously, there is no harm in that. That is acceptable. But let's say if you have an article and there are 100 cite, uh, 100 total references in there and out of which 50% or 60% are your own articles, then that is not a good practice. So it is always better to focus on the quality of your work when you publish in good venues it will automatically uh, you know attract citations okay sir uh, another question from my side is sir uh, uh, recently i have experienced some of the papers in the cmc it's a very prestigious journal but i saw in, in that journal and another one journal as well uh, from ieee side uh, they send one paper to write. They just uh, send me some of their papers and they said me to cite their papers. So I don't know sir, what this sort of a thing is happening uh, in the reviewing process can, because they just can, send me sometimes like that. Can you can you repeat your question because your voice was not clear? Can you repeat your question? Uh, basically sir, uh, recently uh, I'm also publishing some of the papers in the prestigious journals like CMC in tech science or like IEEE or like that. So uh, if I'm going to uh, send my paper to that journal, so they uh, most of the time they send to the reviewers there that are not relevant with my area and they just send uh, papers to me and they are just clearly seeing me that I cite this paper and like for improvement, no other like thing. So uh, uh, what sort of thing is going on uh, during the review process? Because uh, it's I think not good. Yes, uh, you are right, and this is uh, not a good practice. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, the reviewers have the responsibility. You know, they should not ask uh, authors to cite their own papers or cite, you know, uh, their group papers. Okay, uh, 
that is not a good practice. If, if, uh, for example, if a reviewer is asking to cite one or two papers that are that a author is missing, okay, uh, you know sometimes it happens that when you are working in one domain and when you submit your article, uh, your literature review is not that much good, and you missed some of the key uh, key discoveries in that area or recent papers in that area. So reviewer has the right to suggest that one that why did you compare your approach with uh, four years old approach? There is another recent approach published. So please uh, discuss and compare your approach with that. So uh, in that sense, uh, the recommendation of reviewer uh, to cite an article and to compare that article is fine. But if the reviewer is uh, asking to cite their group's paper or their university's paper or their colleague's paper or their own paper, that is not at all uh, a good uh, good practice. So. Uh, you know, if you look at the good journals, uh, they they try to monitor such activities, and if they if they find such activities, they penalize, they ban the reviewers, they take serious actions against the editors, and even the Clarivet, Clarivet, uh, basically they have the full control on those journals, and if they found such activities consistent consistently, you know, uh, few cases, uh, if, if, if 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 they are doing consistently, they will uh, de-index them. So. As an author, if we find such thing, we can write our response letter and we can say that these articles are not relevant. OK, uh, and why should I sign? Uh, why should I cite and in a polite manner and then do not cite those articles and then uh, be be confident that your article will be accepted based upon the quality of your work, not on uh, on the fact that you cite the uh, articles mentioned by the reviewer. Some reviewers are there. I know uh, they, they, there are a lot of uh, such cases. But you know, uh, you need to be confident that your work is strong and it should be accepted based upon the quality of that work. OK, so you can you can argue in your response letter politely that uh, these articles are not relevant and we believe that they should not be okay, uh, included. And if if the reviewer okay. in the next round, they reject your article and then uh, unfortunately, if let's say if your article get rejected, you can launch a complaint. OK, you can contest that decision that you know my uh, try to evaluate my uh, my paper on the on the quality of my work okay and if you find that such thing happens a lot you can go to higher you know higher authorities within the publication domain and they have the proper procedures to handle such issues okay sir we are having another question from uh, from uh, india and uh, he is asking sir is the uh, some of the uh, uh, PhD doctors, they are announcing like the book uh, call for book chapters and they are saying that that book chapters are scopus uh, from Springer, from what is the book chapter is of the level of a conference or is it of a better thing like the scopus is better than just uh, regarding like conference. Is it better? So, so there, there are different indexing bodies. Uh, like Google, Google Scholar, Google Scholar is uh, again indexing. There is a uh, uh, Scopus, which is uh, led by a publisher Elsevier. But these these indexing bodies are, you know, publisher dependent. OK, and they are not that much of high quality as compared to the Clarivet. Clarivet is publisher neutral that is looking after all the journals. OK, so first of all, we need to understand this thing. Second thing is that uh, you know, there are different types of uh, articles through which we can disseminate your knowledge. For example, uh, one can write a textbook. Uh, you know, you cannot compare a textbook with a research article because both are addressing different aspects. OK, so similarly in book chapters, you can uh, you can uh, publish your research, you can uh, report your uh, results. So book chapters are normally fine uh, if if you are publishing uh, a book chapter or even a book in a good publisher that is of uh, high quality, it means you are doing a, a good work. But you, you know, you cannot say that uh, book chapter is less than a conference paper or thing like that. Uh, of course, uh, book chapter is not that much highly peered review as compared to conference article and as compared to journals. So when we talk about, you know, pure scientific technical contribution, we will always go for journals or good conferences. Uh, so uh, in, in, in general, uh, Book chapters are far less below as compared to conference or journal articles. Uh, 
sir we are having another question regarding patent if we let's say if someone is going to file a patent so uh, is it necessary that uh, he or she must have to publish their article first and then go for filing paper patent no if you if you go for a patent remember that you you must not disclose your idea or invention in any form okay if you if you disclose it in the form of a letter or article or journal article or conference paper uh, you may not be able to go for a patent. So for a patent, uh, in order to register your patent, you must not disclose your idea or your work in any other form uh, except the patent itself. OK, sir. Uh, uh, is, uh, let me ask sir, the audience as well. Is, is there any question so they can ask? And I will uh, say that uh, you guys will receive one of the link. Uh, uh, must fill that link regarding your certificate. At the end of the session, you guys will be having a uh, certificate after the session. Uh, sir, there is a question. Uh, how to differentiate between a conference and a journal? There is a, a student. Your, your voice was cut. Can you repeat your question? Okay. Yeah. Uh, how to differentiate between a conference paper and a journal uh, paper? One of the guys asking. So, so, so simple is that, uh, you know, whatever paper it, it is published, uh, uh, you can see the venue where it is published. If it is published in a conference, uh, it, it will be written over there. OK, on the on the website of the publisher that it is published in, uh, in a conference. And if it is published in a journal, uh, they will mention that it is published in that particular journal or translation or letter or uh, whatever journal name is. So this is one way. Second thing is that uh, Clarivet uh, basically uh, issues impact factor for the journal. So impact factor is not for any conference. So this is another way to identify uh, between uh, a journal and conference paper. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, is there anything like uh, like how we are having the APC charges for the uh, uh, research paper? So, is there any APC charges regarding the patent as well? Uh, for the patent, definitely uh, there there is a you know um, uh, office in your in your particular university or in your particular institute when you when you submit your patent, register your patent, file your application for the patent, you have to pay, and it's a huge amount. So you cannot alone pay by yourself. So you will go for for the uh, through through your university or through your institute because it's a huge amount. For the uh, APC. Sir, please. Okay, sir. Uh, Hello. Is it, is so. Uh, okay. Ask the question here. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. I have question. Is that uh, like if open subscriptions, if they are uh, uh, like. If uh, like paid subscriptions, if they are uh, like highly reputed and have they, they have got good reputations, then why should one go for the open subscriptions? Because in open subscriptions, an author needs to pay, and uh, also like uh, the the reputation is comparatively low. So why should we like uh, go for the open subscriptions and like uh, like uh, for the open publications? Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, I will always go for subscription base. I will not go for uh, open access. But I, I was talking about in principle that if someone is publishing in open access and if they have the funding, they can go and publish in open access. But my personal view is different. Uh, I, I go for subscription based journal where I do not have to pay a single penny and I, I, I have the uh, you know, I can wait for years, uh, one year or two year uh, to get my article accepted. I have no issue in that. Uh, so I want to uh, uh, go in that direction. But as I said, uh, you know, different people have different uh, uh, approaches. If someone says that I have the funding from EU and they are providing funding for publishing in open access, so why don't we uh, we go and wait for you know uh, one and a half year or two years uh, to get your article published? Uh, we have a very uh, you know uh, very good scientific work and we want to disseminate that knowledge as early as possible and make our uh, uh, knowledge publicly available. So that's why they go for open access and there is no harm in going for open access if if the quality of the journal is good and you have a uh, quality contribution. Also, sir, does it affect the citation rates? Yes, it uh, it uh, of course it affect, but uh, it, it is not completely. Uh, it, it's difficult, you know, if you look at the uh, uh, high quality journals, OK, 
publishing in high quality journals when you have high, uh, you know, very good quality research, whether it's subscription based or it's open access, it will attract citations. Of course, there are some um, some studies where they are trying to compare it, but it is hard to say that uh, uh, open publishing in open access will override uh, the subscription based journals or uh, in their journal. It, it, it depends upon the, the quality of the work that you do. OK. Uh, sir, recently I have uh, completed my research in the telemedicine in rural areas of the sin. So, like, I was thinking to get it published, but I wasn't sure where should I publish, like, either in the uh, like open publications or in the subscription based. But uh, sir, because like, if we go for the subscription uh, subscription one, no doubt they have got good reputations. But the thing is, okay, I guess I'll go get the lower citation. So, I was just confused to uh, like what to prefer or not. No, either no. the citations no. or either should I like. Never go for thinking, you know, first remove this thinking from your mind that my article should get higher number of citations. This should this should be not be the approach. Your approach should be my work should be of high quality. It should be published in a very good venue and when it will be published in a good venue and when I will be contributing, you know, in my article, it will automatically attract citations. Do not go for citations itself. It's in principle it is not a good approach as an early early career researcher. You you do your work your best. You publish in a good venue. You will see you will get the citations. Do not go for citations yourself. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so there is another question. One of the guys asking about that. Uh, should I do PhD here in Pakistan or abroad? You can uh, do PhD uh, where wherever you want in Pakistan or abroad, but uh, but personally speaking, uh, it, it depends upon the circumstances. It is always good to go for, you know, developed countries uh, so that you can learn uh, state of the uh, art knowledge, for example, in, in Europe, in US, in Canada. Uh, but there are many good uh, supervisors and universities there in Pakistan as well. So I cannot say that do not go for doing PhD in Pakistan. No, that, that is not the case. It, it totally depends upon the circumstances, your circumstances. Uh, is there any other question from the audience? Uh, so thank you so much for your time. Even uh, me as a researcher, I'm also doing research in uh, Pakistan. So I'm so happy to have you as well, even the engineer talks as well, because I heard your name when I was doing my master's degree. And I'm so happy because uh, some of my friends, they are also, uh, they also did uh, their master's degree from you there in Comset War Campus. And uh, I was happily announcing that uh, I'm going to uh, share a presentation uh, with uh, Sir Mubashir. So I was I was so much happy, and even the, uh, uh, the the rest of the whole country is also proud on you, sir, because like. Uh, it's a proud moment for us because like whenever we see a Pakistani and he's having a highly cited uh, research papers. So uh, we f feel really much proud on you and it's really a big thing for us that there is someone uh, from Pakistan and there is someone from us to be there in the scientific community and contributing and uh, really we are so much happy because like I see uh, your profile every time you are guiding students, you are doing things for for the Pakistani community, for, for everyone. So we are proud to have you, sir, and it's a really proud moment, not even for Pakistan, but for the entire world as well. And hopefully we will be having you in the next sessions as well and thank you so much sir uh, it's really a big thing for us and thank you so much for giving us your precious time because your time is really much important for everyone even for the students as well so thank you thank you so much from the engineer talks and especially from my side as well uh, thank you so much uh, take care bye assalamu alaikum okay is there any question Yes, sir. I have got questions, sir. Okay. Sir, Salam Hussain from Krishna Absha. Actually, first of all, we are very thoroughly elected to have you among us. So I have a very basic question. Uh, be, being an undergraduate, undergraduate mechanical engineer, how should we go ahead if you want to write a research paper or article? 
uh, what should be our first step and how to execute? Never try to go for research in undergraduate. OK, during your undergraduate studies, try to focus on the courses that you have. OK, try to uh, try to learn those courses. OK, do not go for. Research or research paper during your undergraduate studies when someone comes to us and give an interview uh, for PhD scholarship, we look at how much uh, Excel he or she is within th th those courses that he or she studied during the bachelors. Now, if you are, uh, you know, if you are CGPA is uh, let's say 3.8 out of 4 or you are very much, you know, Excel in all the courses, then you can spend your time on research, but do not think about research during your undergraduate. Try to focus on your studies. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very much. OK, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.